Since Shadow of the Air Tree has come out, we've been trying out all of the many different weapons and weapon types and coming up with some fun new builds that put them to use. But now, it's time to answer the burning question of, okay, so fun is one thing, but what are the best weapons in the DLC? That's a tough question to answer due to how many different styles of play there are in Elden Ring, but we're going to do our best to list the 10 best weapons in Shadow of the Air Tree in no particular order as of patch 1.12.3. Remembrance weapons aren't always necessarily the best weapons in Elden Ring, and if we're being frank, there are many that are a bit underwhelming, but Rolana's Twin Blades are certainly not one of them. They're stylish as all hell, and they come with their own unique moveset due to being the only paired light greatsword in the game. Which means that, when you two-hand the weapon, it splits into two swords as opposed to you just holding one sword with two hands. It performs best in a specialized build that goes heavy into both intelligence and faith thanks to its excellent weapon art which puts you into a stance that allows you to use either a flurry of int scaling magic attacks or surround the area with faith scaling fire eruptions. The unique build will let you wield both sorceries and incantations to great effect while also having a badass and damaging melee weapon as well. You can snag these blades by turning in Rolana's remembrance after defeating her in Castle Instis. While not as fancy as Rolana's Twin Blade, the Milady makes up for it by being much more flexible as a weapon. It too is a light greatsword, which makes it have a really good balance of power and speed, not to mention a very slick moveset with combos that flow very smoothly into each other. It's the versatility that makes the Milady such a great weapon though. It's fantastic one-handed alongside a shield or a staff, it's great two-handed, as there are a variety of great Ashes of War that you can equip to it, like Wing Stance for instance, that enable it to be a strong choice in a number of different builds, and it does solid poise damage for how fast some of its attacks can be. All things considered, the Milady is easily one of the best base weapons that you can find in the DLC, and it can be found very easily right here in Castellensis. If ever you wanted to cosplay as Wolverine in Elden Ring, the Beast Claws will do the trick. These are some rather vicious close range weapons that can be used to tear your enemies apart with slashing damage. Using either the default Ashes of War on the self titled Beast Claw or the Red Bear's Claw will make you feel like a rushdown fighter out of a fighting game, unrelentingly swinging at your opponents until they fall to pieces. Beast Claws scale with strength and dexterity, making them a perfect choice for the close quarters melee player who wants to get even more in the enemy's face. And once again, what's great about it is that you can get the standard Beast Claw right at the beginning of Shadow of the Air Tree. Head east from the starting cave to find an NPC named Logar the Beast Claw wandering in the woods, who will attack you on sight, but you can take his weapon for your own after winning. The Red Bear's Claw comes from the Northern Mausoleum. You can get one guess as to what kind of boss fight is inside. Curved Swords are already one of the best weapon types in the game, as they're fast, have a fantastic moveset, weigh very little, and typically don't have very high stat requirements. Horned Warrior Sword has all of those great attributes, but then also comes with the added benefit of having an incredible innate weapon skill called Horn Calling. It's a fast casting spell that does very respectable holy damage in a fairly large radius for low mana cost, and doesn't require a very high faith investment since its weapon skill damage doesn't scale with faith. You won't be clearing out waves of albinarchs and farming runes like you would with the Sacred Relic Blade, but as far as general usefulness goes, the Horned Warrior Sword is a very well-balanced weapon that has a great moveset, hits hard from up close and at a distance, and once again has a low stat requirement that allows you to use it either as a main weapon or a sub-weapon that you just use for its Ash of War. You can get it by farming Horned Warriors in Bellarat with the small private altar side of grace, giving you the easiest and fastest access to one of them. The Blood Fiend's arm was hands down one of the two best weapons in the game pre-patch. Due to its insanely high bleed buildup on its heavy attack and the ridiculous amount of poise damage that it could deal, you pretty much would be staggering even the hardest bosses in the game with just two or three charged heavy attacks and then would proc bleed and another stagger two or three heavy attacks after that. While it's not quite as strong now, it's still an absolute beast of a weapon that can largely do the same thing, just less easily. It's also not a very hard weapon to find. 
Simply farm these Blood Fiend enemies located all throughout the Realm of Shadow, though the easiest place to repeatedly kill them to try to get the weapon to drop is near the Cliff Road Terminus site of Grace at Prospect Town to the south. Great Katanas, aka Odachi, are another new weapon category in Shadow of the Air Tree, and they definitely deserve to be on this list. As the name implies, they're essentially the Great Swords of Katanas, dealing heavier damage with a longer reach at the cost of speed, but still with the same general moveset focusing on a mix of wide slashes and piercing thrusts. It's hard to pick just one of these for this spot, so we're going to cheat a little and sing the praises of all three. The basic model can be found in a lake in Northern Gravesite Plain next to a Ghost Flame Dragon. This is the most flexible of all the Great Katanas, as you can put your own Ash of War on it and tailor it to fit your build. Rakshasa's Great Katana is also an excellent choice, thanks to its Ash of War that does wide continuous slashes, with the added benefit of super armor, but at the cost of taking more damage. Great crowd control, excellent damage, and fairly minimal FP cost for how powerful of a technique it is. This one is found at the Eastern Nameless Mausoleum. And finally, the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana is a must-have weapon if you plan to kill lots of dragons. Its scaling isn't as good, but it does extra damage versus dragons, and its Ash of War can be charged up to launch a very powerful projectile that does great damage all around, but once again does extremely good damage to dragons. It can be found as a reward for killing the Ancient Dragon Man in the Dragon's Pit Dungeon. The only other Remembrance weapon on this list is the Spear of the Impaler, and yes, that does mean that you'll have to beat Mesmer to obtain it. Once you trade his Remembrance in the Round Table Hold, you'll be treated to a Great Spear that deals heavy standard, piercing, and fire attacks with a high chance of criticals. It scales with Strength, Dexterity, and Faith, making it a great choice for Elemental Melee builds or anyone looking to pair melee with incantations. You can even charge up a heavy attack to throw the spear like a javelin, causing it to erupt in flames upon spiking into the ground. But the real reason this fiery spear makes the list is because of its flashy, devastating Ash of War, Mesmer's Assault. The Impaler himself used this on you during his boss battle, and now it's your chance. Mesmer's Assault starts with a series of slashes, followed by some stabs, and ultimately ending with a large AoE ground slam that makes spikes erupt from beneath you. It might have been a pain to dodge during the fight, but it feels really good to use in the same combo against your own enemies. Backhand Blades are another new category for Shadow of the Air Tree, and they are great for anyone trying to play the Rogue archetype. There's a lot to like about these weapons. First off, they can be found extremely early on in the DLC, located right here in the Gravesite Plain. They're fast and can hit multiple times, making them great for building up status ailments, and they have an excellent Ash of War from the get-go in Blind Spot which lets you dodge attacks and immediately deal a substantial counterattack while also putting you in a position where you're unlikely to get hit by a follow-up. Along with the Milady and the Great Katana, Backhand Blades are great all-around picks and can have their affinities changed to slot into pretty much any build you want. You just can't go wrong with these. The Barb Staff Spear is a weapon dropped by Jory, Elder Inquisitor, on the way to the Abyssal Woods, and if you're familiar with that fight, you no doubt know that annoying spell he uses where he spams like a hundred holy arcs at you. Well, that power is in your hands when you wield the Barbed Staff Spear, and it's just as powerful as it seems. This thing absolutely shreds any sort of enemy with a weakness to holy damage, and doubly so if you're able to stack both Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia as your talismans. The actual weapon itself is pretty slow, so you'll have to pick your spots if you plan to get into melee range, but you should rarely have to with how powerful Jory's Inquisition is. The DLC was very good for people who love giant bonk sick weapons, and our personal favorite one of these outside of the aforementioned Blood Fiend arm is the Ancient Meteoric or Greatsword. This weapon is a reward for completing the Ruined Forge of Starfall's past, and was a personal mainstay of my own throughout much of my playthrough of the DLC. It's a great sword for strength and arcane builds that looks absolutely sick as it's basically just a giant slab of obsidian, but most importantly is its powerful weapon skill called White Light Charge that sends you dashing forward at high speed like your Dante from Devil May Cry using a stinger attack with a follow-up White Light Explosion that deals huge damage in a relatively small AoE in front of you. And those are our picks for the 10 best weapons in Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree. This list is by no means exhaustive, and there were a bunch of hard cuts that we had to make to just try to keep it to 10. If you want some help finding builds that use some of these weapons, make sure to check out our videos covering a Mesmer Spear of the Impaler guide, 
and our Beast Claw build guide. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.